Hey, so, um, Deep, right? It's a new Thai film that's hit Netflix, which, you know what I mean? I, I do like the fact that the, the, the Netflix library has really branched out. Right, and we're getting films and TV shows and the whatnot, literally from all over the world, right? Which does give you a different insight and look at stuff, and it just offers people, you know, well, it offers viewers, you know, what I mean, more opportunity to um, expand, right? And it also offers creatives, hey, just more opportunity to put their ideas out into the world, right, now, not all those ideas are gonna hit, <laughs> you know what I mean, um, so yeah, Deep, it's this new Thai film, and I have to say, right, after finding out about the production, it does make a bit more sense, right, so it's actually a film that it seems came out of a, I think it was maybe a school project because a group of students at Bangkok University made it through financing from Transformation Films, right? So I don't know if it was a Transformation Film project, pro, look, project right? Or, um, you know what I mean, maybe, they, they were on a film course and the university teamed up with Transformation Films, something like that. But yeah, it was a, a team. And so you had um, five directors and six writers, you know what I mean? Which, whew, that's a lot of cooks up in that kitchen, you know? And um, yeah, also, I, like, I'd be interested to know the ages, and that's not a, it's not a slight, right, but I think it, it comes to nuance in storytelling and ideas and things like that, which I think some things come with age, right, and experience, you know, uh, so it was directed, and I will butcher all of these names, because Thai names are not the easiest, right? But uh, Sita Lik Havanchikul, Jetarin Ratan Sakat, Aprikat Samad Kidspun, Fandabdi Uwaya, and Adric Watalia, they all directed the piece, and um, you know, um, three of them co wrote, right? So, Sita, Jitarian, and Aparak, along with uh, Kitat Nook Najam. Um, Wist Sasatang and oh, and Fanabdu, um, Fanadi also co wrote, right? So, I mean, I think that does help, right? Having um, some of the directors right, so you know, I mean, it helps maintain that vision. Right, so we had, you know, four of the directors writing, just with two other people up involved. Uh, our cast. All right, well, we have got Jane, who is played by Panizara Rukusalrakan. Uh, Win. Oh, well, actually, let's say June. Um. Jane's sister, she is played by Warisara Chit Priduskal. Uh, we then have Wynn, who's played by K. 
Hey Lertushikiai. Sin, who is played by um, Supani Suta Vatong. And Peach, who is played by Crit Jirapafana Wong. All right, we've got um, Pro Professor Nietzsche, who's played by Duj Da Vand Hanapakon. Um, yeah, I think that's good. I think I've butchered enough. <laughs> I think I've butchered enough. Right, and they're our main characters anyway, people. Okay, so um, the gist of the film four insomniac med school students are lured into a neuroscience experiment that spirals out of control and must and must find a way out before it's too late. Right, so that's essentially the gist now. We, you know, I think we kind of introduce first off through Jane, right? She seems to take the anchor of the film, right? And you know, straight away we we have her, you know, we see her caring for her gran, you know, she's cooking, she's doing a lot as well as studying in school, right? She has a, I well. We don't, at first, you, it's hard to tell, is it a sister, is it a roommate, who knows, right? But there's a girl, she opens the door, there's a girl, she comes in, ignores her, you know, she tries to talk to her, doesn't get anything. You know, we then see that the bills are piling up, so they're in a situation, right? She goes to see her, you know, her lecturer, right? And her lecturer is just like, um, hey, you know, you, what's going on, man? You know, having that heart to heart and it's just like, oh, well, you know, I'm studying. I need money. Everything's getting a bit crazy. And then, you know, she offers her this trial. She's like, oh, you should do this trial. Right. So, um, yeah, she she enrolls. Well, she goes and they tell her, hey, you can make uh, this amount of bank, right? And it's a lot of money. I think it's 50,000 bait at first. And um, yeah, it's a lot of money, right? Even with the trend, um, transformation, translation, trans, what do you call that shit? God damn it. Translation? It's not translation. It's transversion. Transportation. Shit. Well, the exchange, I could just say exchange rate, couldn't I? Yeah, let's just say exchange rate. Even with the exchange rate, it's still a few foul. You know what I mean? Regardless if it's pounds or dollars. Which, hey, if you're broke and you're a kid, it's nothing to sneeze at. You know, they're at university, so it's hard to tell. I'm assuming these kids are, you know, 16, 17, between 16 and 18, let's say. I'm assuming, right? And, um, yeah, so, you know, she decides to do it. And, um, you know, then, oh, now it's a crazy thing. Like, after it's done... Then it's like, oh, by the way, there's, you know, these are the side effects. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't fall asleep because you could die, right? Which you're just kind of feeling, surely, right? Surely you're getting that shit first. And then they're also told you can't tell anyone about this, right? So it's odd that no one seemed to want to know any information before agreeing, right? It's just, yeah, it's this amount of money. And you have to think, right? If someone's offering you a silly amount of cash, there's a reason. You know what I mean? There is a distinct reason into why that's happening. You're not getting given money for nothing, 
All right. <laughs> this is a kicks ain't free, people. Kicks ain't free. Yeah, of course I had to do that shit, you know. But um, yeah. But right, you have to wear this watch thing, right, to help track because they put a chip in the back of the neck. The watch tracks it. It's like wearables, <laughs> just the next level, you know. Uh, but the you know, it's a watch, it's a very distinctive watch. So obviously, right? It's oh, you can't tell anyone, but if it, all they need to do is look at wrists and be like, oh, you're doing this shit like me, right? So slowly. You know, four of them get together because Wynn, well, Wynn approaches Jane and then he's like, yeah, and blah, blah, blah are on it too, right? So then they kind of get it together, form this thing. And obviously with these things, right, the first time it's easy, but then it gets harder and harder. And that's when they get into this trouble. But like the idea isn't that bad it's not a bad idea but i think for it to fully work you need to be able to you know look at this and go oh i understand man right yeah you've got no other hope but to do this thing but we don't really we don't we don't really see that right there's not really a reason for the others to do it. Not that we're really given, you know. Sin, she's got rich parents, right? Doesn't want to be in med school, but wants to do comms, but she wants to be a social media style, which you know, is like a comms degree isn't going to help you be a social media star. You know what I mean? Like, it, I mean, it doesn't fully make any sense, but hey ho, you've got Peach, who's a gamer, who's rich, you know? So, and Wynn is just, a, he's a party animal, supposed, right? So, the, the roles, right, the archetypes they've created for these characters are pretty generic. Right, which again, mm, who cares? But in, in creating these characters, you need to give the audience, the viewer, like a reason to emphasize, but you don't really have it, even with chain. Right? It's just well, how did the house like how did you get into so much debt? Right, it's obviously it's house bills and stuff. It's not like she's running up credit cards, but your grand's mad old, so it's not like she just suddenly became mad old. You sh you would have had a track on those bills a long time, so you'd have seen it get to that stage, right? So there's no explanation on that. Also, there's no explanation on kind of like why is what between June essentially we find out is her sister, right? But why isn't the sister acknowledging anything like this? Because you kind of look at it and it seems that June isn't that much younger than Jane. So she would have had an understanding on how broke they are, right? Even as a kid, I realized, you know what I mean? As a little kid, I realized, yo, we weren't rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? We didn't have a lot of money. So I just never really asked for shit, right? Because I think you can. Work that out, right? Now, you could just be kind of, you know, a little selfish, a little all about me, which, you know, in some regards, a kid is, an, you know, you understand it, right? But I think it's when you're building characters, you have to decide, like, what's this character, right? What are, what are their emotional traits? You know, what's that kind of thing? And they didn't really do that with June, you know, or Jane. So we had them do this thing, but they struggled the first time, even though it is a little easier, they struggled the first time, but then they re-up, right? And you're just like, 
what's going like why you know like what are you doing and we see them we, we you, you know we see them out and about doing their lives and all of this firstly right if you have to stay up i don't think you're drinking alcohol you know what I, mean? I don't think you're drinking a lot of alcohol because that's going to put you asleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's going to put you asleep. Right? Like, there was nothing with these motherfuckers like drinking coffee or just energy drinks. You kind of, kind of thought, right? All right. They, they'd be trying to get that caffeine rush. Also, we know it's a thing, right? You have treadmill desks. Hey, you just think, all right, maybe they try and work that out. So if they're doing their uni work, they do the uni work, work in a treadmill, which again is going to help those scores go up. Or at least go gym, right? Go run, something. But we don't see that, right? We, we, we see them do like just silly things. You know, when it's just like, ah, oh, I've got an idea. But it's them jumping in a pool, not swimming, just jumping in. Right? That isn't enough. Like, it's not enough. What are you doing? But all of this kind of thing goes down, right? And listen, the plot goes on, but they try to throw in these twists, right? There's something with June. But here's the thing. You have, you're playing her in one way. But then you get her to do this thing. Get her to do this thing, which you think is a f is fine, but not from the character you've created. The character you've created, you don't believe that she's going to do this thing, right? So there is that, right? The other thing is this this big thing happens, but. June has already done it before this big thing happens. So it's not like, oh, you did it because of this? No. So you're kind of like, what? You know what I mean? Like, you kind of think there would be so many, probably so many opportunities for her to help, but she didn't. And now all of a sudden you're giving, making her do this thing. So it's just like, I don't really play. It doesn't really play. And the film, it does kind of meander. They try and throw in a lot of romance and all of these kind of plot twists and these weird sort of things. You know, if you've got a creepy room in your house, you'd lock that room. <laughs> You know what I mean? So there's all these, these weird things. They try and throw in this situation with Win and his dad, right? But it, it doesn't really work. And now you've done this thing, but you haven't given us enough. So it still isn't really adding a lot of depth to your characters, right? Now, in, at, the, at the very end, they really want to throw in a few twists, right? Really pile the twists in at the end, but not really huge twists. Not really huge twists, but you got to think about, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, certain things aren't getting offered without someone knowing what the fuck they be, right? Especially when you look at you know, the situation. So that's not really a huge twist. It's not really a huge twist, you know? Plus, like, there's an offer made. This offer that's meant to be this offer of help. But it's just like, hold on. We've saw you about halfway through realize that you need to do shit for this to work. So why would you then go to this spot at the end? Don't make any sense. Don't make any sense. You then get another reveal about the reason. And then all of a sudden, boom, something else crazy goes down. You're like, but why would you do that thing? 
right? Like it just all got mad convoluted at the end. And I do kind of think, and this is what I said at the start, right? Once you realize how the film was made, kind of makes sense because you got five directors, six writers. So yeah, shit gonna get a little muddled, you know, a little convoluted. And that's what it feels. Everyone's been throwing ideas out there and be like, let's do this, ah, let's do that, boom, boom, boom. And, and this is what you get. Now, what I feel is deep, it is probably gonna work for a younger viewer, right? And it's not scary. It's not scary or anything like that. So you could probably give this to like a 12 year old, I imagine, maybe even a 10 year old, right? And I think they would be like, oh, this is crazy. You know what I mean? I think it could work for them. I mean, for an older audience, it, it probably probably won't work as well. I was not going to say that all the older audience is going to be like, yeah, I'd rather call it shallow than deep. Boom, boom. But, you know, I think on a whole, it, it doesn't really resonate as well with an older audience just because the nuance of the story. And when you kind of look at this topic, we've already had some very good films that follow a kind of a similar thing, right? Now, I think the one that jumps out the most, Flatliners, kid, especially because it's med students fucking around. It's kind of, it's, it's not necessarily beat for beat plot-wise, but it's on along a similar line, right? And that was dope. I've never seen that new version they did, but that, you know, the original with Kiefer Sutherland, was Emilio Estevez in it? I want to say he was, but, you know, Kiefer was definitely, that was great. That was a great one. So you had that a few years ago, Netflix, Bird Box. Yeah, I mean, that was a whole, I think, was it people couldn't sleep or something, something, but there was that. And then I feel it was early this year and we definitely talked about it, but there's another Netflix joint called Awake, right? With, uh, I feel it was um, Rodriguez, surely from Jane the Virgin, right? Boom. And you had that. And I think those stories, they were kind of more nuanced, right? They they just had more meat on the bone. So, I, you know, I do feel there's an audience for this. And as I said, look, I feel it's probably the younger crowd, you know? But, uh, yeah, you know, I think if you are, hmm, I think if you're mad into your kind of, Asian dramas, right, K-pop, all of that thing, then maybe as well, it, it might resonate with you, because you're familiar with that form of storytelling, you know, but, hey, it's on Netflix, so you can dip your toe in, see if you like it, you know, you have to ask yourself, will you be able to swim, or are those waters real shallow, who knows, it's deep, baby, it's 